Aloy is back again in Horizon Forbidden West to save the world from decay along with learning more about the mystery of those of the old world. Sony again has brought to us their signature style of heavy story driven games with mainstream gameplay. Forbidden West does pull off this song and dance, but not without a few stumbles along the way. So should you play Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition? Well, let's find out. The story of Forbidden West follows Aloy to the West as she is trying to put Gaia back together. Gaia being an AI that could fix the entire world and its systems. And along the way, Aloy meets up with people from her past along with new characters that she gets to befriend. This cast of characters ends up being Aloy's crew that help her along her journey. Well, I say help, but ultimately they just don't do anything to the last mission. It's clear that Horizon Forbidden West was inspired by Mass Effect. You have a base of operations where all these new characters and even some of the old ones you get to meet up with and interact with and talk to. And basically you get to do the kind of Mass Effect thing where you get to talk to them and build a bond with them. Problem is, unlike Mass Effect, these conversations are very surface level. And seeing as most of the new crew is just trying to learn about technology that Aloy's familiar with, a lot of conversation just boils down to them figuring things out from the old world and learning about the secrets of the past. Aloy kind of pries a bit, just a little bit into some characters' lives, but ultimately there's not really much to go off of. You see, there's a key fundamental factor that is required for games like Mass Effect to work that Horizon Forbidden West just simply doesn't have. Good narrative gameplay must have consequences to feel rewarding. Forbidden West offers plenty of opportunities to ask for further details that do not matter because nothing changes whether you learn more about them or not. Quickly, I realized that there was no point in learning more about characters and mission details because Aloy will figure those things out anyway. Skipping most of these optional details gave me a better overall story experience. As I wasn't beaten down with pointless information, but if you do want it, it's obviously there for you. Ayla herself is a bit odd. I personally do not like Aloy as she is often rude in situations that do not call for it. The interesting thing though is that she just suddenly stops doing that. To be clear, what I mean is there is no actual character development that changes Aloy's attitude. She just kind of stops being mean for no reason. She is still awkward with people due to her being an outcast, but her poor attitude that was in the first game and in the very beginning of Forbidden West just kind of turns off. I was obviously happy she stopped treating others like dirt, but narratively speaking, it doesn't make any sense. It was like the writers realized that Aloy was uh, not a nice person, then just made her chill out for no real reason and without any context. Aloy is still a badass though, solving environmental puzzles, exploring old ruins, and of course taking down machines. Combat focuses on studying your prey, learning their weaknesses and strengths to take them down with ease. Forbidden West increases the numbers of weapons and combat abilities available to Aloy. There are so many weapons that specialize in a certain playstyle that some weapons do seem redundant. You would think that wouldn't matter as games that use guns as their primary weapons do give you a lot of weapons in the same category. So Horizon shouldn't have an issue with adding more, but it does because the core gameplay is different. Unlike most shooters, Horizon is about hitting key weak points on enemies, removing armor and applying elemental damage. You can only carry about six weapons at a time, plus each weapon only uses certain arrows. So in order to cover all your bases, you will stick with multiple of the same bow only because one hunter bow can only use certain arrow types. So as an example, what I mean, let's say you have a hunter bow. This particular hunter bow only uses fire ammo and regular arrows. Guess what? If you're fighting an enemy that also is in the same arena as you and they are weak to ice, you're going to have to use a, another hunter bow. So remember, it's the same bow, but this one now can use ice arrows. For some reason, they didn't think, well, let's just let the player use all arrow types because it's an arrow and the arrow itself is what is elemental, not the bow, whatever. This awkward system is even more evident in the RPG elements. Aloy has several different general skills in a both aggressive and stealth gameplay, making her deadly from the shadows with traps and takedowns, or turning her into a mad woman with a barrage of arrows and bombs raining down on her foes. 
The skill tree seems big, but this is actually an illusion, which I found to be kind of disrespectful. Because as you can see, as big as this chart is, most of these is the same skill twice. So it's basically just you doubling up on the same skill. Why did they make this look or appear to be bigger than what it is? Well, it's to be deceptive. Even more confusion is added with the gear system. Not only do you have multiple different armor and weapons, but each can be upgraded and they even have rarity tiers. To be clear, Forbidden West does not have randomly generated armor or weapons. And weapons and armor aren't tied to your level either. Which means upgrading your gear is basically pointless unless it's the highest level gear possible, which is legendary. It doesn't even take long to find shops that sell high-end gear either. Again, going back to how the narrative gameplay is inspired by Mass Effect without understanding why that system works so well, here they added more RPG and loot mechanics without understanding how those systems work in other games to be fun for the player. The best way to put it is like this. Almost everything newly added to Forbidden West from a gameplay perspective is equivalent to adding an ingredient to a dish that you can see but you can't taste it. You will know that the intention was greater than the end result. The only positive thing to be said is that although it's strange that so many unnecessary additions with poor execution were added, none of them ruin anything. Once you understand it can be ignored, it's business as usual, which is great because fighting robot dinosaurs is just as good as it ever was. Now, Burning Shores continues where Forbidden West ends and Aloy is off to LA to hunt down a threat from the base game. Burning Shores focuses on Aloy helping Seika find her sister and save her people from the same person Aloy is hunting. Aloy and Seika are basically the same character and they develop a bond over the course of the DLC. It's the first time Aloy shows any emotions beyond arrogance and annoyance. So for that, I think the DLC story is cool. This DLC does add a few new enemies alongside a cool but pointless boat vehicle. Kind of reminds me of God of War. With only five main missions and three side quests, it could easily be beaten in a day. The DLC is worth playing if you enjoy the base game as you get access to more legendary weapons and gear. Plus the DLC ends with an epic boss fight. So should you play Horizon Forbidden West, the complete edition? It depends on a few key factors. If story is important to you as a gamer and having a likable protagonist can make or break your enjoyment, I wouldn't recommend Forbidden West. Horizon is so dialogue heavy that even if you just stay on the main course, you would be skipping so much of the narrative that I would just suggest you play a game with a better story. If you are more focused on gameplay and story to you doesn't have to be amazing, I would recommend you get Forbidden West Complete Edition. Despite the weird RPG elements, the core gameplay of taking down robots is peak. No other game handles precision-based hunting so well like Forbidden West, not even Monster Hunter. I suggest if the story is annoying to you to just skip through it if needed. Forbidden West is one of those flawed sequels that still has such a high redeeming factor that I still can't help but recommend it. If destroying giant robot dinosaurs sounds awesome to you, then you will enjoy Forbidden West. Get to the weapon! If I can draw that thing close, open fire!